Fans of movies, TV shows, and streaming content are in for a whirlwind of change in the coming years. The WGA is striking again. If you don't know the implications, stay tuned. It's time to explain everything impacted by the 2023 writer's strike. What exactly is a labor strike? Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight-year-old? Be you for or against them, in any given instance, a strike is simply a work stoppage, where employees of a given field or company decide to withhold their labor in order to force all work to stop. This could be for a myriad of reasons, ranging from the mundane to the existential. Here's an example. You and your friends work for me in my Dr. Pepper cream soda factory. Now, over time, you realize that I've slowly been reducing your salary and supplementing it with Dr. Pepper Cream Soda. Of course, you can't pay rent with Dr. Pepper Cream Soda. Rent? So you and your friends try to negotiate with me in order to be paid real money. Either I refuse, or negotiations break down some other way, and there's another problem. You and your friends could quit and hope to find another job, but odds are a lot of you won't. So, how do you force those in charge to listen to your grievances and change policy? you attack the bottom line. If I can't make Dr. Pepper cream soda, I can't make money. So you and your friends stop making it. The real world is a lot messier, but that's what's happening. Not meaning to make light of the subject either. Labor strikes have done actual real world good from fighting unsafe work conditions, unfair work policies, and protecting workers' rights in general. The important thing to understand is through collective bargaining, CEOs and members of boards are forced to listen to those who they profit from. And that's the goal, to level the table of employment. Writers right now are unhappy with the current conditions in Hollywood, and when their demands were not met, they kneecapped Hollywood executives' profit. It isn't the first time this has happened either. A good portion of you may not have been alive or aware enough to remember the writer's strike of 2007 to 2008, but we'll cover that shortly. Who is striking against whom, exactly? WGA stands for Writers Guild of America, and the AMPTP is Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The WGA was officially recognized in 1951. All you need to know is it has two big branches, east and west, splitting down the Mississippi River. While they work in tandem, the WGA West is the important one here. I am better! The AMPTP, however, is a trade association. This is a body funded and run by a collection of companies all working in the same field. In AMPTP's case, production companies. They only exist to bargain against the union. Now you know the basics, time to familiarize yourself with the specifics. The WGAW represents writers for television and film, as well as stipulations for new media, but I didn't go to law school for a reason. And here in 2023, television is less of an issue than streaming services are. And in fact, shows like Stranger Things are a perfect microcosm for the issues at hand. The writers involved with this new world of on-demand entertainment are striking against conditions brought about by companies leaving old-school media traditions behind. More on that later. When did all this start exactly? Philosophers and scientists will be debating that until the end of time, but the strike started on the 2nd of May, 2023. And at the time this is being written and recorded, there isn't an end in sight. That's okay though, because we can use the power of comparison and try to speculate when we may see filled writer's rooms again. WGA and AMPTP come to an agreement every three years, the Minimum Basic Agreement, or MBA. As you suspected, over a decade ago, no MBA could be met. So on Monday morning, November 5th, 2007, the writer's strike began. At the time of jurisdiction, DVDs and something called new media were the big issues. Essentially, the WGA wanted to clarify writers for reality TV and animation fell under their jurisdiction. But of the three, this one was removed rather quickly. Next, writers were being paid only 0.3% of DVD residuals. They proposed 0.6%. AMPTP disagreed. Decimal points, high frequencies. This too was taken off the table a day before the strike happened. Finally, we talk about this weird term, new media. It's the internet. There is a much more complicated answer, but just think internet. Prior to the strike, there were no set standards for this new distribution style, and this was the biggest issue for many writers. So big, they shut down production of some of the biggest shows at the time. Do you remember that episode in Breaking Bad where Hank dies in season one? No? That's because the strike forced two episodes to be cut. Family Guy had to finish an episode in season six without Seth MacFarlane. Hard to imagine since he's like half the town of Quahog. By the way, he once again left to support the strike, so be prepared for some Meg-heavy episodes coming up. This new strike, with issues not too dissimilar to the last one, could be around for another few months ahead. But what does a writer's strike look like to us as consumers today? Where can we feel the lack of writers the most? The most notable will be late shows. If it stars a Jimmy or has the word late in it, it stopped production. Last week with John Oliver and Bill Maher's show included. But HBO won't be empty. The second season of House of Dragon has already been written. 
Speaking of George R. R. Martin, his future show, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight, is also suffering from the lack of writers. Oh, and remember how I mentioned Stranger Things earlier? Well, season 5 has been halted as well. The second season of Good Omens and the finale season of Big Mouth were both delayed. Fans of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings can rest easy though. Rings of Power and Andor both will continue filming, just without writers present. The list goes on, but that's not all that interesting. Speculation time again! The writer's strike in 1988 gave us easy dumb shows like Cops. The last one popularized unscripted reality TV and gave us one of the best movie musicals ever made, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. What, if anything, can we see from the newest vacuum in entertainment? We will never rid ourselves of the cancerous effect of reality TV, but I think the competitions are going to be the thing that fills the void. Companies will prioritize profit and mass appeal and fall back on the easy turn your brain off stuff. Think your masked singer and wipe out stuff. Nothing against them specifically, just easier productions in comparison. Or there could be a sudden resurgence of improvised content. Whose line may suddenly become cool? One can only hope though. The takeaway should be this. The writer's strike affects us all. One way or the other, something you love or loathe was written, and it could be gone at a moment's notice. Unless you like Who's Line, because that only gets cancelled for being ahead of its time. Back to the serious stuff now. Why are writers striking anyway? The main issue is once again new media related, but specifically streaming services. The last MBA negotiated in 2020 did not include writers for streaming content. That's issue one. Next, we have gig work. There has been a rise in production companies signing writers for mere days at a time. The strike is attempting to curb this change and keep people in work. Next, we have the writer's room itself. Yes, all those references I made earlier were leading to something. Another concerning trend is the physical rooms where writers do their job are being taken away and teams are being cut. Like the nursing strike not too long ago, they are being expected to do the same job with fewer people. Finally, we have the new fad of the internet. We're talking about AI-generated content. The WGA wants to safeguard writers' positions by addressing the issue before it rises. The proposal is to limit the use of AI in a writer's room setting as a tool used by writers to help with research, not replace them entirely. A goal we all should hope for because, like the movie, AI has some issues writing. But to fully appreciate the schism that stands between the WGA and AMPTP, WGA's proposal would gain $429 million for writers. The counterproposal by AMPTP, $86 million. For perspective, the average industry profit is somewhere around $29 billion. $86 million a year would just be over three pennies on the dollar. I know, I did the math. How is this going to end? The safest bet is WGA and AMPTP meet at a compromised MBA and life moves forward as it always has. The best outcome, for writers at least, is AMPTP caves and starts implementing the WGA's propositions. Maybe they outlast them. Remember, the AMPTP is a collection of corporations under the guise of a union. So there is a non-zero chance that the strike may put one of them out of business if it goes on long enough. If this doesn't end in the writer's favor, we are prone to receive a flood of poorly thought out and profit-driven media for the foreseeable future. For tangential yet related evidence, please turn your attention to the purge that is HBO Max. In order to save costs leading to a merger, they removed and erased all evidence of 36 titles. Among those 36, over 200 episodes of Sesame Street. Do you like Infinity Train? Too bad. It doesn't exist anymore outside of online purchases. One of the reasons for this mass removal is residual pay, a reason the writers are currently striking. We have to stand by them because they make our culture as we see it. How can we help, I hear you asking? If you are able and in LA or New York City, you can show up and pick it with them. Be part of the protest. What if you aren't, though? If you're part of a union, you can ask your representatives about supporting the WGA, and donations always go a long way. The Wheel of Fortune is heavily weighted in the favor of executives. They wring talent and profit out of the hardworking people in their employ, trickling profit down like feudal lords in a drought. Every big break in media consumption is a new area to exploit creatives until they fight back. And they are fighting back as much as possible now.